Hey guys, welcome back to Ranger Survival and Fieldcraft. I'm Andrew. What I have for you today is Primitive Fire Kit. Stand by. Alright guys, so today for Primitive Fire. Now, for our fire, we are not going to have any matches. We won't have a lighter. We won't have a ferro rod. And we won't have man-made tinder. Today, we're using only primitive methods for fire starting. These are antediluvian or antiquated items that have been around for thousands of years. We're gonna start today with our oldest method, which is the bow drill fire. It's been around since 7,000 BC. We're going to use that ember we create with our bow drill with natural materials to form our tinder bundle or bird's nest. to get our first fire going. And then using our primitive fire kit, we will create tinder material out of that fire using materials we have with us for starting a fire that next time, or starting that next fire without having to use a bow drill or friction fire method. We will use other items but are in use today, such as the fire piston, which has been around since 100 AD. and then flint and steel fire, which has been around since the Iron Age. So we're gonna use those methods and we're gonna use the natural materials around us to start fire. Let's get started. All right guys, so we have our primitive fire kit or our bushcraft fire kit here in this ditty bag. I'm just gonna go over the items as they present themselves inside the bag. Now we have our ditty bag, which is just tan leather with a thong on it to keep everything tight in the pouch itself while we're traveling. That first item that we're gonna have is a couple of bits of fatwood. Fatwood is a great tinder source. All fatwood is, is impregnated pine wood with the resin of that pine tree. Impregnated pine wood is a great source of tinder. All we have to do is shave this wood off and to find shavings with the knife and then ignite it using a fire starter and it will burn for a long time. And fat wood and pine wood were actually the first forms of matches in China in 577 AD. The Chinese would take resinous wood like this and dip the ends into sulfur and then they would have basically the first form of a match. Uh, next item is just a basic pocket knife. This is just the Vitronox Farmer. It's got a large blade, a saw, an awl, can opener, bottle opener, screwdriver, all that good stuff. We can use a small knife like this for processing different materials or cutting cordage and just having another spare knife on our kit. The next item is a fire piston. Now fire pistons have been around since approximately 100 AD or so with the Austronesian people uh, in what is today the Philippines. But fire pistons were used in tropical environments with punk wood and with sharp material as a fire starting tool. This can be taken anywhere and then process and make different tinder sources like char with the fire piston itself to ignite tinder. Next, we have a candle. A candle, before the advent of electricity, headlamps, flashlights, all that good stuff, was the way we lit our dwellings and our living spaces during night or at nighttime during hours of limited visibility. And we can use this to extend flame as well, but we can use it primarily for camp craft and lighting our camp. So a candle, a beeswax candle like this, will be another addition to our primitive fire kit. Another item in our primitive fire kit is jute twine. Not only is it cordage, it can also be tinder. We can take the jute twine, fray it out, and use it as a tinder source with a striking device or add it to a tinder bundle. In the event we don't have fine enough tinder for our tinder bundle, we can place this inside the bird's nest or tinder bundle to act as finer material when we drop a coal inside to blow it into flame and ignite a fire. Jute twine is just another tinder source that doubles as cordage. It's gonna be inside our primitive fire kit. Another item that is in our primitive fire kit is a lens. This is a five power lens used to harness the sun's rays to ignite tinder. A 
lens is a very powerful fire lighting device that we can use with a renewable source like the sun to ignite fire. So a lens is going to be one of the items in our primitive fire kit for starting a fire. One item that is more contemporary as opposed to antediluvian that we can add to our primitive fire kit is just another hank of cordage. It's a 550 cord, nylon cordage that is already made. Cordage is one of the hardest things to recreate in the wild, especially if you don't have the technique and skill. It could take you a long time from tree bark to grasses, but having cordage already in our kit can give us the ability to use it as a bowstring for a friction fire set or for traps, lashings, whatever. But cordage is a multi-use, multi-functional item that we can use and adding a small hank like this of six to seven, eight feet of cordage into our primitive fire kit gives us the ability to practice friction fire without having to make cordage at the ghost. So cordage, another hank of cordage is gonna be another item in our primitive fire kit. One of the oldest forms of fire lighting in our primitive fire kit or bushcraft fire kit is flint and steel. Here just have a carbon steel striker with a piece of shirt. Flint and steel has been used since the dawn of the Iron Age, since the discovery and processing of iron. Roughly 1200 BC to 300 AD, flint and steel has been used to make fires. All we need to do is take our carbon steel striker with our piece of shirt and simply strike it. We can get sparks off of that shirt because the rock is harder than the carbon steel when drive flakes of that carbon steel off that oxidize when exposed to oxygen fast and so this will be the mainstay of our primitive fire kit next what we have is just a small tinder box this tinder box we can open up and place char material inside like the material i have inside this tin right now we can also use it to store our flint and steel creating a small primitive fire set and then using tape tape off the sides but this can go inside our ditty bag and with our kit and we have a smaller fire lighting kit in the form of flint and steel and then char material in our ditty bag well we can use this tin to char material and then contain that material while we travel and make different camps so a small tin or tinder box to hold our char and flint and steel set as well as other fire lighting implements is a good thing to have in our primitive fire kit. Now one of the last items in our kit is just a scrap piece of military cravat. This is 100% cotton material we can use in conjunction with that tin or with another metal container over a fire or in a fire to create char. So we have the availability of making char with this material if punk wood is not available. So having a piece of cotton cloth, 100% cotton or other material that will char in our kit is a way for us to have tinder at the ready and make at a fire and then take with us to create more fires down the line. So having a piece of cotton cloth is one of those last items in our primitive fire kit. One of the mainstay items for our primitive fire lighting kit is going to be that bow drill set or our friction fire set. Now here I just have my bow drill. This is made out of aspen. There are aspens and cottonwoods in my area, but those two types of trees are similar to tulip poplar. They are all the species of poplar that are soft woods, can be used as friction fire sets, and then their bark can also be used as a tinder source. The first bow drill set, or the oldest bow drill set found, was in the Indus Valley region, which is what is today modern day Pakistan and Afghanistan, and those were found at approximately 7,000 BC. So almost 10,000 years ago, friction fire sets have been used. And so with a primitive fire kit like the one we have, we do have more contemporary items that humans have used, but items like our bow drill set and then our flint and steel are prehistory, proto-history fire lighting tools that humans have been using. And so for a primitive fire set, having a friction fire set like this for a bow drill and flint and steel, we're avoiding those more contemporary items. The bow drill is going to round out our primitive fire kit because we will take this bow drill, use it to create an ember, light a fire, and then use char material, whether it's that cotton in our kit or punk wood, to create char using our tin. And then we have that tinder source of char we can use with our flint and steel and our fire piston to create fire 
that much easier the next time around. All right, guys, so we have our primitive fire kit or our bushcraft fire kit. We've got our bow drill or friction fire set, flint and steel. We have our fire piston. We have a candle for transferring flame and then holding flame. We have ready-made sources of tinder in the form of fatwood and jute twine. And then we have the ability to make more tinder with our cotton cloth and then our tinder box. Now let's talk about natural materials. It's not just enough to have these items, but we need to know how to use the natural landscape around us to make tinder. There are several places we can go to find natural tinder. Fatwood was the first one I showed you that we can go, and there are plenty of pines like this one right next to me, where we can find fatwood as a tinder source. However, using a bow drill and flint and steel, we're going to need finer materials for starting fires because those embers that we create, not only from flint and steel, but especially from a bow drill, are so fragile. They require very fine material and a lot of it. So let's talk about tinder. Now you'll notice that it is winter right now and there's snow everywhere. So dead dry grass on the ground would be one of the first locations we could go to to find tinder or a tinder source. For a primitive fire set. Another form of tinder that we can use if we do have marginal grass, marginal materials, and we need finer materials, we can use cattail. Cattail can be found down by water sources. This cattail is also a wild edible, not the cattail itself, but the plant can be usually eaten year round. And it's a universal edible as well, meaning that we can find it in just about every hemisphere where humans live. Now with this cattail, oftentimes in winter, the cattails will freeze and compress. You can see the seedlings are blowing away right now in the light breeze that we have, but we can use this, break off the cattail and the finer materials right here, and use that to start a fire. But a cattail is another form of tinder that we have at our disposal, especially in wintertime, that we can use for firecraft. Another form of tinder that we have available to us is tree bark. This is cottonwood bark, and cottonwood is a poplar. I have several species of poplar in my area. Aspen and cottonwood be two of the primary ones, but poplar is a softwood that its bark tends to shed in large clumps like this. and hang from dead dry trees. We can take that bark off those dead dry trees from high locations, stuff that is not on the ground, and use it to form our tinder bundles or bird's nests, that coarse, medium, and fine material for our tinder bundles, and then add that ember to the tinder bundle in the form of cottonwood bark or aspen bark, and use it to blow it into flame with our primitive fire set. So bark is another form of tinder that we have available to us for our primitive fire set. We're gonna start today with our oldest method, which is the bow drill fire.
were able to get friction fire, build an ember with that road drill. We blew that ember into flame with the cottonwood bark and cattails that we collected on our way out here. Started our fire successfully, and got it built up, and now it's sustainable with the amount of fuel we have on here. And you just saw that we added our tin with our cotton material inside to create char cloth for our next fire. Now all we have to do is wait. I moved my tinder box out of the flame. We're gonna check it here in a minute. Once it's cool to the touch, we should be good, and there shouldn't be any danger of exposing that char to oxygen. It shouldn't reignite once it gets cool enough. So we'll let it cool. I'm gonna hang out here. I was gonna move camps today and demonstrate the fire piston and tinder bundle at a different campsite, but as I walked in today, there are mountain lion tracks literally going through my camp, not five feet from me. And then just a few minutes ago, I didn't get it on film, I wish I would have, there were a pack of coyotes just over this next draw howling at something. Either they got some game or they're on the chase, whatever they're doing. And then they stopped howling and then I heard them further up the incline over here on top of this hill and it sounds like they're moving to the east and away from me. But they are downwind of my fire so they're going to smell that fire and hopefully no humans are here and stay away. So I'm going to stay here with my fire and keep this fire going just because of the animal activity in the area and then we'll demonstrate the fire piston with our newly made char as part of our primitive fire kit. So given I gotta remember to look behind me every now and then because mountain lions like to attack from behind. I'm just gonna stay here for the remainder of camp today. We'll keep the fire going, stay close to fire, and then use the remainder of our primitive fire kit to get our subsequent fires going as part of the kit process and methodology. So stand by, wait for this char cloth to cool off, and we'll start the next fire. All right, our tin is cool to the touch. Let's go ahead and open it, take a look. All right, looking pretty good. Completely black, that's what we're looking for. And then another telltale sign it's good. See so if it tears easy like that, we're looking pretty good. This char is ready. Now all we need to do is either take out our flint and steel, strike sparks onto this, or we can use percussion fire with our fire piston and start our next fire with our fire piston. But either way, we have available tinder now that we can use for the next fire. All right, we've got our tinder box. We've got our fire piston. This is what we're gonna use for our next fire. Our next bird nest or tinder bundle is ready to go. So you can see, taking the cottonwood bark, cattails in the middle, and then we've added a little bit more char to the center. Because the char we're gonna use inside of the fire piston is gonna be very small. So we'll prep by adding more char to our tinder bundle. And then we'll take our fire piston Take a little bit of our char, close our tin, and then add our char cloth into our fire piston. Now one pro tip, I'm gonna take my pocket knife, that's part of my primitive fire kit. I'm gonna get my reamer out. I'm gonna use that once the char is ignited in my fire piston to transfer it to my tinder bundle. There we go. See, it's lit, a little bit anyway. Transfer it to tender bundle, good to go. We've got time now because we added more char into our tender bundle. Not worried about time. We'll pick it up. Now we just do the same thing as usual. Just 
and then that would have been our second fire. You can see that with our char from our cotton material and or punk wood combined with our fire piston, very primitive. So we've gone from 7,000 BC up to approximately 100 AD in time here. But we can still use these tools for fire off the landscape as long as we know what we're doing. But another fire with fire piston. All right, guys, well, I hope you liked that video. If you did like that video, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, leave me a comment in the comment section. I appreciate everything you do for me and for the channel. I wanna thank you guys, not only for everything you do for me, but for hitting 20,000 subscribers. That's great. I hope you guys like this video on primitive fire kits or primitive bushcraft fire kit. I'm gonna sit here and enjoy some hot coffee and a little smoke before I pack up and head back downhill. But I wanna thank you guys for everything you do for me and for the channel, for your likes, your views, your subscriptions, your comments, your feedback, and your shares. And I'll be back with another video as soon as I can, guys. Thanks.